Hey guys and welcome to another schematics update. This time it's me at Full TV and Blind IRL and both from Frontier. Way! Hey! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I have to do like double the cheer now because Ed's not supporting me. <laughs> oh yeah, true. <laughs> to make up for the lack of Ed. I, I can edit in from past episodes with all you guys. Oh no, oh gosh, don't do that. <laughs> That was slightly odd. Yes. No, seriously. So, yeah. I was going to just say you could edit him in. <laughs> <laughs> no, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining again. Of course, anytime. So we want to talk a little bit about update 1.4, which is coming out next week. <gasps> Very true. November 22nd is when it's uh, when it's out and we're super excited. So. We too. We can't wait for it. <laughs> uh, so the first question we have, um, the, the, the update will add a lot of new management aspects uh, like the staff management building and the scenario mm -hmm. editor. Um, I'm just curious, how important is management for Planet Coaster? Uh, very important. So um, for us, it's it's one of the things that we wanted to address and improve quite early on and um, it's kind of always been kept in mind for each update um, but with 1.4 it's definitely one of the the biggest focal points so for example we we knew that like fireworks um, the benefits of fireworks on guests they were going to be very big um, so we wanted to make sure that they had their own functionality um, as an extra challenge and then also you know how to best apply them to your park um, but again for 1.4 the uh, increase in your interaction with staff is one of the big uh, updates with the staff building um, and of course the scenario editor as well and also how you're going to be appeasing them how you're going to be rotating them um, and we we kind of expect a lot of um, yeah challenges from the scenario creators so so it all kind of works together that way listen to these answers from Vote of Rees, they're so good. Speaking of scenario editor, I love yeah. that it's finally in a game. Yeah. I know! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited to try it out, but I've got yeah. a question regarding that. Um, I'm not sure if Andy C said it, mm -hmm. like on stream, yes. um, that we can edit things like trees and stuff outside the park borders is that correct uh that is correct Ooh. um so the scenario editor is basically i have to give a big shout out to to the lead programmer andrew chapel but also gameplay programmer uh, brantley pollard uh and dan and andrew they're all um another andrew sorry andrew thomas uh they're all really heavily um worked really really hard on this feature and and for them it's kind of like opening their sort of background dev features to the community. Um, that's what the scenario editor is all about. So basically, uh, it involves quite a lot. So you can set the park border size up to kind of the maximum size of the, um, the voxel terrain. Oh, really? And also you can make really small parks. So it, it, it will also kind of allow you to make like really tight parks and add sort of a special challenge to you know, whatever scenario you come up with. You can also set the height, which is um, really cool if you want to force scenario players to a certain elevation or allow them the sky as the limit. Like, that's pretty cool. So, hmm. yeah. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. <laughs> um, we, we, we can adjust the park size? Uh, yeah, you can set the park border size and also the height. <laughs> okay, now, now I've got to process <laughs> that. So it's the maximum size of the voxel terrain. So it doesn't go beyond, the, as far as I know, it's the limits of the park in sandbox mode. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I think so, yeah. That's what I understand from voxel terrain. Uh, but that's a technical term that Chaps wrote to me. <laughs> I would take that to mean editable terrain. Mm. Right. Hmm. Uh, I can check it right now, actually. Because there's some extra space before the skybox. Maybe. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, so let me just double check what it says when I open one here. Edit park dimensions. Yeah, so... Oh, actually, nope, I'm wrong. You can go outside. Whoa. You can make it bigger. Okay, now my mind is blown. As far as I can see, you can go a tiny bit outside of the voxel terrain that you get in sandbox, up to a thousand width, and for height it's 625. Um, so I would say it's a 15 to 20% increase of what you can do. Wow. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Hope that helps. <laughs> we'll show it off again in, in, in the Wednesday livestream uh, tonight. So. Gotta get the video live within 
20 minutes of that live stream finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now. I'm so happy. Uh, <laughs> le le let's move on. <laughs> right, we could just end the video right there. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bo. Um. <laughs> the Weisshorn uh, you introduced uh, as being the first flat ride with more than one skin. Um, first off, why does it have more than one skin now? And... Uh, Will we see more of this in the future? I mean, kind of. So basically, the Monte Leone is the, the kind of little brother of the Weisshorn, and that was purely based on the community feedback. So what we saw um, at Frontier Expo when we did the 1.4 reveal and we showed you some of the features, um, a lot of the community feedback was, oh, it's very heavily um, fairground-themed. It's not sort of... Um, you know, free enough for people to, to add their own themes to it. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a, an outcry for, for sort of that ride, but not so, uh, not with, with the roof or without the roof, sorry. Um, so basically we thought that was a great idea. And, um, Sam Denny and, uh, some other artists, they, um, just made some extra time to, um, make the Monte Leone happen, basically. And that's where it came from. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's something that, you know, we, we are going to do retro, retroactively to rides. Like some people didn't like the Zozo for being too sci-fi themed, that sort of stuff. Um, I don't think we'll be doing that, but, um, it's definitely another indicator of, you know, your feedback is very, very important to us. And when possible, um, we, we like to implement you know, things that we hear from the community as fast as possible. And for this update, it was just perfectly doable to add um, another flat ride, which was the Monte Leone. So yeah, that's where it comes from. Cool. <laughs> another big thing in the upcoming update are picnic benches. Yes! Wow! <laughs> I'm pretty sure you saw the videos how we went crazy in the green room. <laughs> Oh, I loved watching those vlogs. It was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was really lovely. It was really yeah. funny. Because the elite people around us were like, what the heck? Yeah, they definitely <laughs> didn't understand. So it was, it was no, really no, no. great to have that moment. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a couple of questions regarding picnic benches. I'll do my best. Are benches and tables one piece or are they separate? They are one piece. Um, so they're tagged under the... Um, path extras and then under benches mm -hmm. you can find uh, the canopies and the picnic mm -hmm. benches so they're all sort of like one uh, one asset so the canopies are separate and the picnic benches are separate um, and you place them just as you would normal uh, benches and bins so you place them on or uh, bordering a path on or on okay yeah yeah so just like with with uh, with normal benches in your park they have to be like on on a plaza or Something like that, yeah. Um, and there's also, like, they're all different themed. So uh, every theme mm -hmm. has its own picnic bench. Um, and then we have some circular ones and some rectangular ones. Um, so there's loads of different, you know, things for people to, to play around with. Um, and, and also, uh, when you click on them, as, as I can tell now, you can color them. So that's pretty exciting. Ooh, Yay. Cool. All right. Oh, hey, I also just noticed. Sorry. I'm just going through the assets right now. Um, we do have some separate picnic benches as well that are separate from the tables. Wow, Yay. cool. That's awesome. That's actually really cool. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see those. So there's a whole bunch of new things to explore there. Yeah. Let's talk about curbs and barriers. Yes. How do they work and what are the differences between them? Um, so curbs and barriers are part of the, or they're embedded under the new fencing category. So if you go to uh, props in scenery, there's now a separate category for fencing. Um, and that's where you'll find curbs and barriers as well. So basically they work similar to benches and bins. Um, guests just avoid them. Um, and... What happened was that we noticed that um, players were using the uh, barrel planters, I think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, under buildings to control sort of guest flow. Um, and while that's great, that obviously wasn't the initial intention for barrel planters. So we ended up classing that as a bug and fixing that. And then people were like, no, I want to sort of control my guest flow. And we obviously understand that. So that's why in 1.4, we put curbs and barriers in there. So it's basically... Um, little path extras that um, let you control where your guests go. Um, they're, they're kind of made at sizes that are best for fitting in buildings or on paths and are therefore more efficient 
than barrel planters. So yeah. Can you tell us what the sizes are? Yes, I can.、Uh, I've got one meter,、uh, two meters, and four meters here. Cool! Yay! <laughs> Let's talk about coasters. <laughs> yes.、Uh, swapping trains.、Um, I wonder what the limits are. Okay,、uh, I'm actually about to make a forum post on this as well to clarify this a little bit before、uh, 1.4 goes live. But、mm -hmm. you know, I like talking to you guys too, so、Aww. you guys will be the first to hear.、Um, so basically,、um, as we said in the presentation, we want to give players a certain amount of freedom, but technically、mm -hmm. there's only a certain amount of things that are actually possible, but also. You know, look beautiful within the game. So, and、mm -hmm. it's not really our mentality to imp you know, to put things in the game that break the game per se. If it's not a cheat code, so being a feature, we kind of had to limit it in some ways. The initial set of cars that you can swap are thirty-eight or forty combinations,、um, and those are supported via a sort of drop-down menu when you are in your coaster、mm -hmm. builder. Um, but then there's also a toggle in the game menu、um, that you can tick or tick off,、uh, and basically they let you kind of break the game. So、um, there's about 140 combinations supported in that one. So it's not all of them, but it's most of them, and they basically let you do whatever you want with the coasters, but within the limits that we have to had to set in order to kind of. Keep the game beautiful.、Um, basically, those extra options they will have some visual clipping and they might have a default audio experience,、um, and therefore we, you know, we support those 40 combinations in the drop-down menu as best as we can, and we would like people to use those. But obviously, if you want to go completely crazy,、um, you can use any of those other combinations that we do support as well. But it's not、uh, any coaster on any train. There are some. That are、uh, that are limited、mm -hmm. to that,、mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I will post a list later on the forums that、um, sets out all the combinations that are possible,、uh, including the 140 crazy ones. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> so speaking of roller coasters,、um, we're removing some of the roller coaster restrictions,、right. and I guess I just want to say why. That's a good question. So basically, again,、uh, community feedback was a big source for that.、Um, we noticed that some players wanted to be more exact about、um, their ride experience, so we wanted to add a toggle that kind of、um, reduces the length restrictions on coasters,、um, as well as allow for greater banking,、um, turning, and a little bit of pitch as well. Yeah, again. The、community played a big part in this, and we hope it doesn't really break the game. We hope it kind of improves everyone's game. So we added a sort of a gameplay feature behind that as well, which is kind of that your guests will be more scared and nauseous、um, when it's、uh, when they're riding coasters that are not meant to invert, for example.、Um, so it will slightly affect them differently. If you decide to play with those options, so my dream of a looping kitty coaster will just make people vomit more. Yes. <laughs> see, this is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. I can live with that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> this is, seems perfect. <laughs> I see no problems here. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I know you guys just like to make your guests go through hell, so sure. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> A little bit. It's kind of cathartic. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. So、um, the update also adds autumn trees, which is great because I mean there is no such thing than too much foliage. <laughs> <in the game. laughs> yes.、Um, but I wonder. In the screenshot you released, there、uh -huh. were like autumn-colored trees,、mm -hmm. but the shrubs are all green, which is、right. kind of breaking the immersion of. Being in autumn. Yeah, I completely understand that.、Um, and again, that has to do with the time restrictions that we had on 1.4 for this update.、Mm -hmm. um, so the autumn trees is something that、um, we had ready, and we were, we were like, okay. Um, we're going to put that in the game、um, as an extra, and that's something that came from the Frontier Expo feedback again, where people were just like asking for a little bit more、um, content in the update. And、um, as much as we stand by our updates when we when we announce and and before we release them,、um, obviously what you guys have to say is really important to us. So that was another、um, direct result of that feedback.、Um, but. Because we are absolutely swamped at this point, we didn't have time to also、uh, get some shrubs in there. So it's definitely something that's still、um, in the planning, but just not for 1.4. Just something、um, to like put put it out there.、Um, 
related to fall stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I've seen tossed around a lot, especially in Twitch chats, is things like just leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar to the vines or something. Just or like the, the snow effect, that sort of stuff. Like a, like a special effect? or I, I was thinking like a flat texture okay. that we could just put on the ground to have piles of leaves somewhere. Right. Yeah, again, that's like customization options that we all are aware of. And it's, it's a matter of um, team availability and time, whether we can get that done for certain updates. But yeah, we're... we're we're aware of that feedback that there's a greater need for more foliage and um, I'm, I'm pushing that as often as I can with the team. There's only so much we can do. <laughs> now, um, you, even though you already broke my brain a little bit with the, uh, with the map editor uh -oh. <laughs> <talk> earlier, <laughs> um, is there any spoilers? things that we don't know yet cheeky question again always every single time <laughs> i come on just you have to have a little spoiler in there i don't write it it's adfo that writes these damn things <laughs> um well i know that we haven't really talked about the new avatars shirts so we have a few uh, or a bunch of new um, avatar customization options that are coming in 1.4 um and there's a couple of new um options for uh, objects to trigger. So with the trigger system, there's going to be a few new updates, but that's all I can say about that. Is that, is that enough for, for spoilers? I don't know. I feel like that enough. I mean, you, you spoiled a couple of things before, so we, we are pretty happy. <laughs> I know. It's only seven days away as well. Like you guys will, oh, you'll, yeah, you'll be okay. Like you'll, you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> we would have some general questions if you don't mind. No, not at all. That's why I'm here. So first one, and this is by Cleve, highly wanted, is mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to use custom media. And he was asking if it would be possible someday in the future to have subfolders to better organize custom media because okay. at least right now our lists are getting so long <laughs> um that's definitely something that i can i can flag with our um with our database and programmers that's that's not a not a not a problem for me to do um i don't know what's going to come out of that but um yeah again that's a good piece of feedback that we can take and um see if we can improve on the current system so yeah. also uh this uh, this is a good one for me now that i think about <laughs> it um can we have the test button back for trains <laughs> <laughs> what we're building please, please. <laughs> um so i got a reply from uh our producer on this one and he said uh this was removed to bring transport rides in line with the go-karts um mm. making building transport rides easier and it won't be making a return so i'm very sorry to say that no um Sorry. <laughs> and I, I think the, the next one is... <laughs> um, I, I'm just read it out. 3D gizmo, will it be fixed? <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know if you're aware of... I had yes. a little chat with NDC on mm -hmm. Frontier Expo, but it was quite late and we had a lot of alcohol, at least I had. Oh, bless. Um, <laughs> so it was a Tuesday. <laughs> I know that uh, I know that chaps had a lovely time talking to everyone as well. So um, <laughs> thank you, thank you for for giving him your your peace of mind. I'm sure he really appreciated that. Um, as for the 3D gizmo, we're very aware of that issue. Um, it's something that's on our list to investigate, um, mm -hmm. but it's quite a complex thing to tackle, and we can't really make any promises about it at this point in time. Um, but yeah, again, thanks for just bringing it to, to light every single time. It really does help us prioritize. And um, yeah, we hope to have a fix for it at some point, but I just can't tell you when or if. Yeah, it's a difficult one. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, exactly. <laughs> and I think we are done with questions. Sure, yeah. Point. If you have any other questions, like I'm here, so you might as well. Like, it's not a problem. It's almost 5 a.m. Can I go to bed now? <laughs> <laughs> Poor blind, send him to bed. <laughs> That's a good question. The answer is yes, you can. Yay. <laughs> so you're released. And uh, thanks both for joining and uh, answering our questions. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope you're all super, super excited. It's only seven days away, November 22nd. I'm super excited. I am. Can't wait to see what you guys will do with a scenario editor either. Yeah, my, my brain is exploded because of that i can't wait <laughs> so for our viewers and listeners thanks for watching and listening and if you have any comments suggestions whatever it is feel free to use the comment section under the video absolutely i always check that out as well <laughs> just so people know like i always check it out in case people have questions and and need us so yeah our little channel matters <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> thanks for watching and listening see you next time bye bye, bye.